Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. I'm your host, Laurel Gray, and I am joined by the wonderful Guy Pearson yet again for another episode. And today we are talking all about Zero, the cloud accounting software. Now, for those of you who are not in the know, Teach Me Tech is all about giving full length demonstrations. So what I really want you all to do is if you're in your home or in your office, make sure that you've got your laptop or a computer accessible so that you can follow along with us and set up Zero, whether you're starting from scratch or you're actually converting from another system today. All right, so what are we going to actually cover off on today? Well, why you would use Xero as one of the major hubs of your business system, setting up a Xero account from scratch and inviting your accountant, setting up your chart of accounts and why this is important, connecting your bank account and activating bank feeds, Choosing a date to migrate your accounting systems and some basic hints to make sure your data is ready. Bringing in your comparatives, and let's be honest, I had to ask what this was, if you have any. Understanding your cash position, customizing your branding templates and setting defaults. And finally, setting up another, uh, blah, blah, setting up your other users for expense claims, approval of expenses, and more. So let's get started. And I neglected really to explain who Guy is, and I left it until now because um, it really ties into our whole topic of Xero. There is no one better to come in and talk about the world's most popular cloud-based accounting software other than Guy because he is an accountant who loves technology. And you have a history of starting up your own accounting firm, Interactive Accounting. And Guy has also founded a business called Practice Ignition, which we've talked about on some other episodes, uh, which essentially helps businesses to integrate with Xero and create proposals and have online payments. That's right. Um, Is there anything I missed there in that intro? Anything else that's special to know about you? (laughs) No, I think you did a great job, Laurel. Thank you so much for having me once again. Great. Well, look, cloud accounting is something that's a really hot topic, and I know everybody out there wants to get on board. And I guess my first question before we even get started Mm -hmm. is, if there are business owners out there who are either starting from scratch or converting their system over to zero, whether or not they're from Excel spreadsheets or they're coming from another accounting platform, is it imperative that they consult their accountant first? Oh, that's a loaded question to an accountant, isn't it? Um, So I would say yes, uh, but to be honest, people who are coming off Excel spreadsheets or starting a business for the first time may not even have one, an Mm. accountant, right? So they may have uh, DIY or it might be the first time they're kicking off. I think it's really important um, to make sure you've got an advisor there to help you through things like tax setup, um, how you recognize your first expenses, just sort of helping you get the core infrastructure around accounting and what the hell you need to do in place. Um, For those of you who already have an existing account, I think it's really important to understand what they recommend and what they understand in terms of the software if you are looking to go cloud, even to zero, um, because you don't want to be training them effectively. Um, Zero makes it really easy, and I've got this loaded up on a tab to view later, but uh, that you can actually find accountants that are sort of pre-authorized or if you're like trained and, and well-versed in how Xero and cloud accounting can work for you and your business. Mm. If you're an ex-accountant like me, you may not need to ask one. Um, if you've done a lot of business in your time, maybe you don't need an accountant to get started, but I strongly recommend that it's something that you consider. Okay, so consider it. And is this something that an accountant would normally charge a, f- a fixed fee for, or would they charge by the hour? Do Typically. you have any rule of thumb around that? And uh, you, you may... You may not so want diff- to answer that question. Different though. firms, different things, excuse me. Mm. Um, so uh, most of the firms I know have a fixed fee. And so it will be, you know, particularly if it's starting from scratch, uh, here's what we uh, charge to get set up and here are the things that we will do. For an existing file, uh, they'll typically these days charge a fixed fee as well and they help use technology to bring in all your historical data, um, which we'll also talk about a bit later. Um, but what it means is that it's quick, easy, it's a well-known process um, and they'll get it done for you as soon as possible. The reason why you want to see an accountant is that they'll typically have dealt with someone in your industry before, so they should have some basic principles around you know, best practices, 
uh, what kind of filters and things you want set up within the, the reporting, how you set up payroll, like all those sorts of things are typically things you go to see an accountant or a bookkeeper for. Mm. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you clue them in on the process as you go through. Cool. I just wanted to cover off on that right up front because I know people ask me that all the time. Well, do I need to go to an accountant? And You don't, I'm, but it's kind of like pulling your own tooth out. Um, yeah. It, you can I've do done it. that before. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yep. Story for another day. Um, so you can... From the country. <laughs> <laughs> so you can obviously set it up yourselves and there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's kind of like going to a mechanic with a half repaired car. Mm. It's going to cost more than taking it to them mm. in the first place. Yeah, and we always want to make sure here on Teach Me Tech that you sort of know the risks before you go and you set up any of these pieces of software on your own. So definitely use this demo as a way to really be clued in and understand the software when you're working together with your accountant. That's my word of advice. Cool. So today we'll be using a lot of the demo company. So if you are considering playing around rather than going through a full setup, Zero has a free demo company that automatically resets for everyone just to play around with. So rather than playing around with your own account, feel free to go in there and muck it up and mess it up and see all the rules and how things work because it's not going to affect your business long term. And once again, it won't cause you problems when you go to see your accountant. Cool. Awesome. Well, we've cleared the decks. Perfect. Uh, my conscience is clear. <laughs> Let's go to the first point here. Why would you use Zero as one of the major hubs of your business system? So Zero's Why? done a really great job of building an ecosystem. So they have 400 plus uh, external pieces of software that you can plug in. Um, and the big reason you want Zero as the core is because it is, sure, it's accounting, but it has kind of all the links to both sides. So whether it's back office processes like payables, receivables management, or front processes like CRM or inventory management, it can actually join the whole lot together. Mm -hmm. um, so what you want and what we're trying to move to with cloud accounting specifically and, and cloud systems for your business and the whole purpose of the show, I believe, is to try and eliminate the upload and download of data, mm. eliminate the disconnectivity of data and make you more efficient um, and, in fact, give you correct information in faster time to make better decisions. Mm. And so that's why yeah. Zero makes a mm. great hub. Um, it does have a really easy-to-use system, but it is really connected with a range of different applications to help you streamline your business. Excellent. That was a great answer. Very convincing. I like it. <laughs> um, but we know as well, and you know, coming from an accounting background, yeah. that zero is not the only choice in the market. No. So without sort of naming names and doing a direct comparison, <laughs> what would be the benefit of using zero over some of the competitors? Like what's what's the one one or two things that make it really stand out? So it's regional specific, really. So. Um, in the US, they're not as strong in terms of their core product suite with payroll and functionalities and checks and other things you need in those markets, whereas in Australia, they have payroll. You can lodge your activity statement, um, your sales tax statement directly from the app. Um, you can process the payroll expense claims. Like Everything's really nice and easy and integrated. They have direct bank feeds for almost every major bank in Australia, so the data's good. Um, so that's like Australia is kind of the logical one. The US, you're probably more likely to go for something like a QBO. It doesn't mean Zero doesn't work there, but they're just mm. they're the incumbent and they've built a great online product. The UK, Zero is fantastic. New Zealand, Zero is fantastic. So um, it's almost market by market in terms of complete feature set, access to clear mm -hmm. data, uh, direct relationships with banks, and uh, you know, accounting for things like payroll and checks even. Excellent. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, Zero is going to be able to be tailored to your unique regional needs. Correct. Cool. That's great. Excellent. Good to know. All right. Moving right along. Um, I guess we kind of want to go and just jump in and just start yeah, why not? going. Maybe can you walk us through the landing page sure. and um, maybe some of the pricing information, just like okay. what you'd recommend starting with maybe. Yep. Um, and then we'll go in and we'll set up our free trial. Sure Yay. thing. All right. So over to the screen. Um, so I've got Zero's landing page up here. Um, it's actually really nice. I haven't seen it since they updated it. Yeah, it looks like but they just finding the pricing it. may actually be a bit of a challenge, which is kind of strange. Um, so here we go, pricing down the bottom. Uh, so Zero typically prices based on a few different things, a few different tiers. Um, it has you know starter, standard, premium here, um, which allows you to have quotes, purchase orders, bills, bank transactions, and there's limits on the lower plans. As you go up, things like multi multi currency um, accounting come into play. And then over and above the top of this, and for some reason we're on the US site, let's put region, let's change to Australia so I can show you something else. Um, they typically have things over the top. So you've got starter, standard, um, and it has payroll for five employees. Uh, you've got premium 10 where it's got payroll for 10 employees, and then they've got larger plans as the business scales up. 
So as you can see, and all of this is typically driven by the, uh, the payroll. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.